Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're going to talk about our four favorite breath exercises because if you've listened to any of our podcasts in the past, we talk about breath a lot. So we're just going to instruct you on four of the ways that we love to tap into it so you can get started today. Okay, so we're doing it again, talking about one of our all-time favorite topics, the breath, which somehow works its way into like every PT Pearl or episode. But we actually want to bring you some hard, concrete techniques and breath practices that both of us love to use at different times and when we use them and why. Yeah, I think this will help to simplify it for people. Like take one of these techniques give it a try see how you feel yes. you know because breath is truly the foundation of where we take everybody yeah movement practice that you're struggling with or you can't get to certain ranges and without diving into all the physiology we've already done multiple episodes mm-hmm. episode 11 we do a pearl on it and that's our first interview with brian mckenzie who is breath extraordinaire master he knows it way better than we do (laughs) and then we interviewed him again i don't know exactly what episode that is but we'll link those up if you want to get more into like the science behind it but some of our favorite techniques i think one that's amazing for everyone to start with would be box breathing if we think about this box i mean we call it a box think of a square all the same size right so we can do a two second inhale a two second hold a two second exhale and a two second hold So you're getting every aspect of that inhale, the hold and what that feels like, an exhale, a hold and what that feels like. And you can mix up those numbers however you want. You can even start to use a rectangle and you can do a longer inhale, shorter hold, longer exhale, same amount as your inhale and shorter hold. You can change the sides of the box to whatever size you want. So it'll end up being rectangle breathing, diamond breathing, (laughs) random scaling, square breathing, like whatever it is. But to start, have all the sides the same length, two seconds, then go to four seconds. And what this really helps you do is it kind of helps you feel which way your nervous system shifts and how you're generally breathing throughout the day. A lot of people fall on the side of more this sympathetic stress type breathing during the day. So when you just do that box breath, you can really feel that nervous system and system kind of relax and melt in. And then that's where Jen and I will generally like going to, okay, a two second inhale, two second hold at the top, and then four second exhale with a two second hold at the bottom or a four second hold at the bottom. And then you'll even more so feel that system start to relax and mellow out. My friend Jill, who drew this beautiful little (laughs) circle, if we look at an inhale and then we look at the exhale, and if we just focus on more of that inhale, then we're looking at more of like that excitatory, (gasps) sympathetic, yeah. Someone scares you, you inhale and you hold. All kind of goes into that more of a sympathetic response, more at the top of the the neck, those accessory muscles that kind of help us breathe. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's why you get a lot of neck tension, right? If you're using those too much, (gasps) focusing on that inhale. And then the exhale state, including the hold of the exhale can kind of tap into more of that parasympathetic state that I'm going to get a massage and I'm, ah. we take intentional breaths together and we do a lot of these long extended exhales where we just sometimes breathe it out from our nose, our mouth, or sometimes hum. And it really just helps to get you into that state. Which is actually the second practice we wanted to like go into is try and do 10, 20, 30 breaths where you just have twice as long an exhale. And throughout those breaths, can you extend it? So say we were doing the box breathing and then we extended to four second exhales. Can you go to eight second exhales and do a two second inhale, two second hold at the top, and then eight seconds on the way out with a four or an eight second hold at the bottom. And we've also had a lot of patients in pain use this technique and all of a sudden either start crying (laughs) because your nervous system has been heightened from the pain that you it it doesn't know this relaxed state right and so all of a sudden these emotions start to boil to the surface or just a complete release of pain and so it can be so extremely powerful okay so let's try that first technique so first technique being the box breathing every side is going to be the same 
So I'm going to have Dom do it. And if you, you can, you don't have to close your eyes. You could be driving. You could be doing this with us. Place your hands on your low rib cage if you can, even if it's just one. Place it on your low rib cage. This is where we want to be breathing in from and you'll feel it relax as well. So we want to try to relax those shoulders as much as possible. So now I'm going to have Dom breathe in for two seconds. Hold for two seconds. Breathe out for two seconds. Hold for two seconds. Now we'll go to three. Breathe in one, two, three. Hold one, two, three. Breathe out one, two, three. And hold one, two, three. Let's do four seconds. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold one, two, three, four. Breathe out slow one, two, three, four. Hold four, three, two, one. Relax. So that was just the box breathing. Now we'll extend it to that second, more of that down regulation, long exhales. So mm -hmm. let's do a two second inhale, a two second hold and a six second exhale. Great. Let's see how it feels. Okay. Ready? So one, two, hold one, two, extend one, two, three, four, five, six, hold it. One, two, breathe in one, two, hold one, two, breathe out one, two, three, four, five, six, hold one, two, last one, breathe in one, two, hold one, two, just use your nose now, breathe out one, two, three, four, five, six, hold one, two. Did you fall asleep? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost. And I'm when we sit here and do these podcasts sometimes like i i start to feel tension in my mm -hmm. back i mean sometimes i just am in too rigid a position and every time i do breath work like this i, I can just feel everything melt away i don't mm -hmm. feel as much pain in my back it gets myself out of my head and that stressed fight and flight state a little bit more so that's amazing yeah and honestly one of my favorite practices that kind of falls under that extended exhale I call it the one minute reset or the 10 breath reset, like whatever you have time for. It doesn't have to be 10, 20, 30 minutes, but if you take a minute and try to split up six breaths and get through a minute or even four breaths and you say, okay, let me do a two second inhale, two second hold, six second exhale with a five second hold. That's 15 seconds right there, right? So that's four breaths that you would get through in a minute. And that's what I used to do when I was in the clinic, when it was a stressful day and I was running between patients, just taking one minute to do that between each patient, kind of dive into a side room, take that minute to take four breaths or six breaths again. It really teaches you control of that diaphragm and mm -hmm. control of how to exhale over 10 seconds. Some people will say, I run out of air after four seconds. Mm -hmm. That means that we get to work on more control of that diaphragm and not releasing our air so fast. And that takes us into our next one where we're talking more of that diaphragmatic breathing. How do we really access that diaphragm? A lot of people think, well, I just place, <laughs> yeah, I use my belly, right? Put one hand on my belly, one hand on my chest, and I just make sure my chest hand doesn't move. And granted, I used to do this with patients as well. But what I found to be way more effective was actually paying attention to what the rib cage was doing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'll take this band, this really cool optimal body band. <laughs> Fancy new band you got there. I know. If you haven't it's heard of pretty. our new optimal body kits, you got to go check this out. But anyways, I'll just take a, a stretchy band, an elastic band and kind of place it around my body and around my low rib cage, I should say, around the low rib cage. And I like to squeeze it really tight, not really tight, sorry, but squeeze it tight so you can Boa hold some tension style. into that. And so this is almost just feedback for the brain to tell you where you're breathing into. And so as I take a breath in, I wanna put tension onto that band. And then as I breathe out, that diaphragm relaxes, the mm -hmm. rib cage relaxes, and you get to feel that happening in the band, which is really cool. This is a great one, I would say, to implement if you're doing mobility, if you're doing an exercise where you feel like sometimes you lose a sense of what your core is doing, or you lose sense of how you're breathing during an exercise. I love to tie a band around my rib cage anytime I'm doing overhead press, because that really helps me keep my ribs engaged and down while I'm pressing overhead. And again, focusing on breathing and working into that diaphragm, the rib control, rib expansion, rather than using those accessory muscles up by your neck as much. And Jen, yes, she held it in her example that she, you know, you'd be able to see if you're watching on YouTube, but you can also just 
tie that band off and have it around your low rib cage. And this is just great feedback anytime. And you can even test it by like, if you know it's hard for you to kind of touch your toes, that's a test that you can do. Let me bend over, see if I, how far I can go touching my toes, put the band around my rib cage, do some 10 breaths, and then retest that forward fold and see if it improved. And so fourth breath exercise we're going to talk about, this was kind of my, I would say, precipice or entry point into breath work and just personal development and growth overall because I could I could tell how much it changed my system so quickly. And I think that's what I liked about it. And also it can get your brain to do some really weird and funky things depending on how far and how deep you push yourself into this practice. It's more of an excitatory practice. So we talked about how the exhales get you into that rest and digest phase where doing this type of holotropic breathing, or some people might know it as a Wim Hof type method of breath, it kind of gets the system a little more excited as you're doing the breathing. The thing I like about Wim Hof's method is as soon as you get to the end of it and you go into the breath hold, you kind of have what some people call a parasympathetic drop. So you kind of drop out of that sympathetic state into this really parasympathetic state really quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what my system grabbed onto initially was feeling how big of a swing that was right away. The good way to feel it is just doing 10, 20 types of breath where you are breathing a little bit quicker and focusing on really big inhales and then just <sighs> relaxing and letting all that air out on the exhale. So it, it would sound something like this. <sighs> for about 10 or 20 breaths. And for the Wim Hof method specifically, at the end, you kind of take that last big inhale and on the exhale, relax and hold or just kind of don't inhale right away on that exhale. I mean, I just did five breaths right there and I can kind of feel myself start to, you might feel a little tingle, you might feel a little bit more lucid. It's not the type of faint feeling you're going to feel when you're actually going to faint, like if you're low on oxygen, but this is a practice that helps you breathe off all of your CO2, which might not make a lot of sense, but... We talk about CO2 a lot in uh, Brian's episodes. In Brian's episodes, we like hammer home at why CO2 is important, but this is a practice that helps you breathe off all your CO2, help you understand what it feels like to not have a lot of CO2 in your system. And then when you're holding, you can almost feel, you can literally feel the CO2 building back up in your system. And then your, your system, your body, your brain tells you, oh, I need to breathe again because I'm hitting my CO2 tolerance point. Mm -hmm. When your blood starts to get a little more acidic, kind of like when you work out, you build up CO2 in your system. That's what you do when you're just holding your breath and in this kind of lucid state. CO2 is building up, 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 up. All of a sudden your body's like, hey, I'm not comfortable anymore. Let's take a breath. And then you take another breath. So that's one that I really love. Sometimes I convince Jen to do a couple of Wim Hof sets <laughs> yeah. with me. We're helping the body start to adapt to stress. And yeah. that's everything. Our, our environment naturally is stressful. Our lives are stressful. So if we do concentrated breath work that helps to build that CO2 tolerance, we're literally changing our reaction to stress internally within our body. There's research that shows if you do a breath practice in the morning, you know, that is going to help kind of set your neurologic state and it helps you have a little more of a baseline to come back around to and that will have lasting effects throughout the day. So it's not just when you're laying down there doing breath practice in the morning, but you will be able to come back and have that reset point like, okay, it's okay. like Jen said, something stressful hits you during the day. We might initially want to react, but it's like, it's okay. I know that I can bring myself back down here with a little bit of fudging around with my breath. Thanks for tuning in for a little PT Pearl on some of our favorite breath practices. If you have any other favorites, comment below. Let us know what you like to do with your breath to control that system. Please subscribe. Go check out the podcast on your favorite audio version of podcasting platforms. Leave us a review, subscribe, share it out there, and we'll see you next time.